But right now, delighted to be joined by Dominic King of the Daily Mail. Good evening, Dominic. Evening, Nathan. How are you, my friend? I'm all right. So we might talk Liverpool first and this story that first emerged last night, and I think caught everybody off guard, that the Liverpool captain, Jordan Henderson, strongly linked with a move to Saudi Arabia. It moved very quickly from being strongly linked to him agreeing terms, it seems, with Al Etifak. And now it sounds as though it's just all on Liverpool agreeing a fee with the Saudi Arabian club. How has this come about? Yeah, um, I, 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 I still, from my understanding, is there's, there's still a bit of um, still a bit of distance to go in in terms of agreements and, and whatnot. Um, but no, it, it is a very um, the best way I can I can phrase it is that Jordan Henderson has, has never been closer to leaving Liverpool than he is at, at the moment. Um, there's been um, interest. I, I think the interest was first sort of emerged a couple of weeks ago um, from Al Etifak. Um, Really accelerated over over the last week, and then um, the money that is um, that they are prepared to offer for him is um, is extraordinary. Really, it's, it's we're talking about um, a salary being um, almost quadrupled. Um, it's 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 staggering figures, um, and that's a salary yeah. that is what already over two hundred thousand pounds per week. No, it's a bit short. It's a bit short of of two hundred thousand pounds, but even still, we are talking, you know. Huge, huge figures a, a, a week. So up on um, what? Three quarters of a million a week. You, what you would be in the vicinity. Wow. Yeah, as my understanding would be that, that it would be um, tax free. It would be in that region. Uh, yeah, I think that's what that's that's that, that there are the terms out there at the minute. It's uh, it's it's it is it's, it's an extraordinary figure. Um, but I mean, I've written a piece in the. Um, in the Daily Mail today, and it's 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 online um, about the sort of um, significance of this transfer and the fact that if they were to able if they were able to get um, Saudi Arabian club were able to get Liverpool's captain an England international who still got a number of years playing at, at a high level, um, he's physically immaculate, you know, still shapes games and whatever. If they if they can take him away while he's got um, the potential of playing in Europe. Um, I mean, I know, I know one thing that every every Liverpool fan is kind of looking forward to next year, potentially winning the Europa League in the Aviva, the, the Aviva next May. If he was to leave, um, while that's on offer to go to play in Saudi Arabia, then I don't think any player in the Premier League is out of bounds for them. If they, I, th- I think they will basically be able to get anyone. I mean, the, 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 they've bought the kid from Lazio as well, haven't they? Um, yeah. Be savage. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, his, his name has escaped me. So, um, again, you know, a, a, a player with huge talents, and he's gone out there. And I think that 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 should. I think every major club in Europe now will be looking at, at that league with um, an element of um, fear. So there's two sides to this transfer. There's the footballing side. Maybe there's three sides: the footballing side, the money side, but then there's the moral side. And you say this isn't a done deal as of yet. And Jordan Henderson, I'm sure, right now is having a lot of conversations with his family, with his friends about this move. And, and I don't know Jordan Henderson well enough to know where the moral side of this will fit, but he's already receiving criticism considering he's been such an admired figure, not just as Liverpool captain, but I think around the game in recent years for the work he did throughout COVID, for his support for the Rainbow Laces campaign, even reading some of the things he wrote in his program notes over the last couple of years on discrimination and his support for that Rainbow Laces campaign. He's won awards for being an ally for the LGBTQ community, uh, says that his view is very much the same as any other form of discrimination, whether it relates to race, religious intolerance, disability, or any other. I've personally never experienced any of these injustices in my life, so I can never and would never claim to have a full understanding like those who suffer from the ignorance of others. But I do believe when you see something that is clearly wrong and makes another human being feel excluded, you should stand shoulder to shoulder with them. You also have a responsibility to educate yourself better around the challenges they experience. That's where my own position on homophobia in football is rooted. Before I'm a footballer, I'm a parent, a husband, a son, a brother and a friend to the people in my life who matter so much to me. With that from Jordan Henderson in print in a Liverpool match programme within the last couple of years, there'll be an awful lot of people incredibly disappointed in him personally 
and their views on him will change forever if he takes this deal. There the will be, yeah. Um, there will be. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a difficult subject this for me because I've known Jordan um, a, a very long time. I've got, you know, I've got a, um, a help write his book. Um, I help, you know, ghost his autobiography. Um, what I know of him as a as a man um, is every every bit. You know, he's. Um, He's a humble lad. Everything that you said in that um, in that monologue, you know, everything that he wrote down, that is that is the lad I know. Um, in terms of you know believing that everybody should be treated fairly, um, and I can understand why. The, I, I, I totally understand where the, the, the criticism that people will have him will come from, and I think he 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 would know this himself that the, the, you know it's not going to be. If he does go, that it's going to be a transfer that people will just say, okay, well, you know, best of luck, go on your way. I mean, there's been, um, I know there's been some um, quotes today from the the cop out group, um, mm. the LGBTQ plus uh, group. Um, they said they're appalled and concerned that anyone yeah. would consider working for a sports washing operation for a regime where women and LGBT plus people are oppressed and that regularly tops the world death sentence table. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, the, the, I, I can't sort of um, disagree with anything there. You know, it's it, um, th- this is his decision to make. That's mm. that's the only thing that I can I can say. And I think he would be well aware of the um, the issues around it. As, as I said, that, that's why there's there's been you you mentioned about talks going on, and, and there will be talks going on about um, uh, about what the future holds for him in, in terms of you know at Liverpool at England, uh, the, the, it's it's a very sort of complicated affairs. But you know, I'm not I'm not speaking from a position of of, of knowing what's go, what's going on. But I think we just have to sort of look at it, you know, in terms of human nature. I don't think um, I don't think there's anybody in this world. I, I, I'm going to take Saudi Arabia out of it for, for a moment, but I'm, I'm talking about pure economics here. If you were offered for your salary was quadrupled, everybody's head would turn. It's just it's it's it's, it's a natural situation. Um, but the Saudi Arabia elements uh, totally um, makes the makes the situation very very difficult. I think that's the best way I can phrase it. And like this conversation has been going on around lots of sports and I think you only have to look at golf as an example of yep. how it has worked in that when Live Golf first emerged, all the conversations were around sports washing and everyone fully aware of what Saudi were trying to do. Whereas now the human rights element doesn't really seem to be a factor in golf. It's actually just what they have done and the disruption that they have caused to the game of golf rather than the morals behind it. And I think what you touched on there as to the disruption that they're going to cause to football uh, yeah. over the coming years. At first, I think people thought maybe this was another China and that this might be a quick hit. But we know that the PIF fund have very, very deep pockets. They've taken over four of these Saudi Arabian clubs are going to invest massively. Why do you think they've gone after Jordan Henderson, who, at what is he, 33 at this stage? I know you're saying Liverpool captain still in and around the England squad. He, he's not a player for the future. Is it the very fact that it's going out and showing the world we can sign the captain of Liverpool Football Club? I, I, I think so, yeah. I mean, the, the, um, the, but there's, there's so many players that are after. I mean, Fabinho, Thiago, Alcantara, they, 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 there's, um, there's interest in them um, from, from clubs in, in uh, Saudi. They've managed to get Roberto Firmino. Um Steven Gerrard's gone over there. Um, he's, he's taken the opportunity to go over there and, and coach. Um, I know Slavin Bilic has just gone. I know they, and they've, they've tried for everybody. I, I believe they tried for um, Luka Modric um, early, early in the window. Um, there's, I don't think there's anybody sort of off. Um, as, as I said, I don't think there's any player that's off limits for them at the minute, and they will want to. Um, yeah, the, the point you made about China is very interesting as well because. Uh, I, w- I was talking to someone who's familiar with a lot of the deals um, before, and he was saying the, the way China, the, the, the Chinese league, um, at the time when they were when they were making a, a splash in the transfer market, and when they bought Oscar and people like that, um, 
it was it was d- done with property developers and they were looking to 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 build an infrastructure and potentially get the the world cup this is different this is this is the the the, the finance that's coming from this is is absolutely sustainable i don't know whether the chinese model was sustainable but this is totally totally there and um for them to um to grow and grow so again going back to maybe the three different factors and we discussed the moral side of it there and that'll be for jordan henderson to decide upon the money straight up is a no-brainer uh like if it's a three-year contract which seems to be the minimum that they want so that the players will still be there in the build-up to the 2026 world cup and the decisions around a 2030 world cup as well like we're talking probably up on 80 or 90 million pounds uh that jordan Mm -hmm. henderson could potentially receive over the next three years the pure footballing side of it like that sense that he is stepping away from uh a team that will be intending to compete for a Premier League title, the man who captained Liverpool to a first Premier League title uh, in over 30 years, uh, all the success that he's had with winning the Champions League, countless trophies, uh, been a mainstay of that side. From a purely footballing point of view, are you surprised that Henderson will be willing to step away from all of that? Yeah, and, and that's that's the thing that I'm trying that, that, that I'm, I, I hope I've conveyed that it's it's not as cut and dried as as. As as, as as is being sort of reported in some quarters, there's a, there's an awful lot for him to think about. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff that he's, he's wrestling with. Um, he's a he's a he's a proud man, and I don't think he would he would like the idea of just sort of um, being a bit part figure that does you know only gets a couple of um, a couple of starts here and there, or you know. Coming off the bench for ten minutes when games are won, that that that, that wouldn't be him, um, given the, the the level that he's played at. But um, in my mind, uh, you know, at the start of this week, if we if we'd have been having a conversation about what do you think Liverpool's starting lineup on the opening day of the season would be, I would have said the midfield would have been um, Fabinho, Henderson, and Alex Alexis McAllister. And that, this is just I know how hard he's worked over the summer. I know the condition that he's got himself in. Um, I, I just thought that that would be it, but um, again, the way the situation's developed over the last forty-eight hours now, I, 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 I just I couldn't say anything with any confidence. Liverpool's summer as a whole has been thrown up in the air then because of what's happened uh, with the Saudi interest around Henderson, around Fabinho, potentially around Thiago as well. And look, they're not the only club in this situation, but Roberto Firmino is gone. Naby Keita, James Milner, uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Arthur Melo never featured, but has left the club no. again. Uh, Fabio Carvalho has gone on loan to Leipzig and they brought in Alexis McAllister and Dominic Zabazlai. The fact that this has all happened so quickly, are Liverpool now in a position where they're not prepared heading into the new season? The, the, the one thing that I think um, will will be so disruptive about this is that um, if you'd have asked Jurgen Klopp what he when we spoke to Jurgen Klopp uh, for the last time before the end of um, the end of last season, he made it clear that he wanted to come back to, to pre season with a couple of signings on board. Um, the nucleus of, of, of his squad there, uh, the, the, you know, there's a couple of long term, or there's a, a couple of injuries that people who, who who won't be involved. But basically, everybody around available, and um, it, his words were, "We can't waste a single day of pre season because we, we need to hit the ground running." Um, he wanted just um, tranquility, uh, no fuss, just you know, the, 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 the getting the signings in done when when they did with McAllister and Summers like um, great business. But now this this issue has come around, and it will be an incredible headache. And he, I mean, well, I would think will be a huge um, factor in this in terms of how he speaks to Henderson because um, I, I remember two years ago when there was there was interest in him from um, Atletico Madrid, um, Paris Saint Germain, and um, Klopp basically stepped in and said he's not going anywhere a new contract will be sorted and he was he was absolutely adamant he's his captain um, he's been his captain um, since the moment he walked in they have a huge um, level of trust with each other um, and for for him to potentially lose that um, so close to the start of the season would be 
would be significant. And I don't think it's the, is, is the type of character that you could easily sort of replace in terms of what he does around the place in terms of setting standards. You know, it's um, those players sort of develop and um, you, you're just not readily available. Who'd take over the captaincy if he left? Van Dijk? I would imagine it would be, um, well, it, looking in, in, it would probably be Virgil van Dijk. It, yeah, but it was, again, it was, to your it, point, there's not a there's not a huge amount of leadership in that dressing room. No, it, no, um, it, it would be Virgil van Dijk, um, Andy Robertson, uh, Trent Alexander Arnold, uh, Mo Salah. Even that, that that would be the that, that would be the leadership group as 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 it, as it stands. They they have a you know they they do have a have a group. But Trent had, Trent had want to step forward, and I, you know I'd, I'd like to make this point: the first time I ever interviewed Trent when he was. Um, 17 year old in, in, in May 2017 um, and he, he was just sort of uh, around the, the, the edges of, he made a couple of um, couple of starts and he, he spoke to a couple of us a uh, couple of the national newspapers and we asked him what his, his ambition was and the first thing he said was I'm going to captain Liverpool he didn't say anything about winning honours it was I want to be captain of this club which I thought was well we all thought like for a 17 year old kid to say was really really distinct and I'll, mm. I'll never forget that and I think you know one day he probably will be Liverpool captain yeah and maybe it's a perfect opportunity as well for Klopp to give him that extra layer of responsibility if he's going to be playing in the middle of midfield it's a, a more natural fit as well so again maybe with Van Dijk I won't say coming towards the end of his career but mm. you know if Liverpool are looking at somebody like Levi Colwell they are probably planning for what comes next after Van Dijk maybe uh, Trent is is a little bit left field but a, a, a smart choice I, Liverpool supporters I think have been worried about the midfield all summer because of the amount of players that had left I'm sure Klopp when he does talk to the media will point out about the young players and the likes of Harvey Elliott and Bajetic and the point that was been raised this week that if Curtis Jones had a Spanish name Liverpool fans would want them bidding 60 million quid after his performances yeah. in the Euros if Fabinho goes and if Henderson goes do you expect that they will go into the transfer market to buy another midfielder? Oh, I, I would, I would, I would absolutely think so. Yeah, um, um, Lavia from Southampton's uh, somebody that they, they've been trailing for a long time, um, or all through the summer. Um, they, they've had, I mean, they've, they've discussed all kinds of options um, this year. I mean, obviously, it, the focus at, at the, at the, for a lot, of, a lot of this this year has been on Jude Bellingham, but. Um, you know the, the 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 economics around that was just made it made it impossible. And plus, he never really given any indication that he wanted to join Liverpool. Um, but they is, so they've probably looked at every midfielder in Europe and is is on the list and, and they know about. So um, I would think they would have uh, all eventualities covered. Uh, while we have you on um, on the other side of Merseyside and at Everton uh, well from an Irish point of view Seamus Coleman signed a new contract uh, yeah. is the expectation it'll be a scrap between himself and Patterson for that right back position again uh, well I think I mean the first thing Seamus will want to do at the minute is um, just get himself fit again mm. after the um, after the injury that he um, that he sustained but um, I wrote a piece about Seamus two weeks ago. Um, I think I think I've been on the, sh the show before with you and, and, and spoken about him for me the the esteem I hold him in and as a as a man more than anything. You know, I've known him since he, he uh, since he came over here uh, in two thousand and nine. Um, I hope he, he once said to me that um, he had a dream to manage Everton. Um, he, we, we, he said this just after he, he'd been at the club for ten years, and um, we were we were talking about it. In the, we were in the gym at, um, at Finch Farm, and we were doing an interview, and he, he mentioned this, and he'd been doing his badges and whatnot. And I hope in this contract that Everton are making um, plans to give him every opportunity in the long run to, to maybe maybe make that dream come true. Um, if he's a you know. He knows the club inside out. He's the one who set standards. And I, I'd go as far to say as um, if he wasn't in the dressing room for the last two years, I'm not sure they would have survived. Right. Uh, in terms of in, in terms of staying up. And I say that because it, it, even when he was injured in the last couple of uh, weeks of the season, he was in Finch Farm every single day, um, just just drumming home the importance of what the club 
means to people in the city. He lives in the city, which is which is quite rare now. A lot of the the, the players from both clubs live in Cheshire. They live out of the way. Seamus is still right in right right in the heart of the city. Shops, shop, you know, he, he's in the local shops. He knows what's going on, um, and he he gets it. And for, Everton have got to do. Um, Everything they possibly can to, to make sure that it, he has he has every opportunity to um, you know be a, be a part of the future and help shape the future because th- there aren't too many people like him left in football. Mm. He's just he's just he's just a diamond. Yeah, there. Uh, I won't go into how it came up, but the, the uh, line about being the most trusted man in Ireland came up around a, a radio presenter here quite recently during the week, and we were talking on the show yesterday morning about who would be the most trusted sports person in Ireland, and we all agree that Seamus Coleman is probably top of that list. You would trust him right. with your life. It is interesting yeah. about potential Everton manager because for so long he spoke about on retirement coming back to Ireland, going back yeah, to Donegal, about- back to Kelly Kil- yeah. Beggs. But again, talking to That's people who said. know him. Yeah. They sense the change in the last couple of years as well. That yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'll, the management I'll, I'll never, side is something he's very interested in. Yeah, I'll I'll never forget the conversation with it because he he, he actually said his, his quote to me was something along the lines of he said I it was always when when I finish football I'll see you later I'm going to play Gaelic football in Killybegs and I'm just gonna you know nobody's gonna know me and you, you won't see me again. But then the, he started talking about like doing his badges and he. he um, he was sort of um, he was um, self-conscious really about um, he, he, he was going to do his badges when he, at the time when he'd broken his leg and he was worried that if, if people seen that he was doing his badges while he was out with injury they, they'd take that as an admission that his career might be over so he was he was a bit worried about that but you know he's come back and he um, looks after himself brilliantly Um you know, never, never, never does anything wrong. Lives, you know, he's he's got every bit of um, talent and um, out of out of himself. And what a, what a servant he's been! One of the best transfers in Premier League history. Seamus Coleman, unfortunately, has had to do the same interview probably a dozen times in his career when a manager is on the verge of being sacked for club yeah. or country and say that he would never blame the manager. The players always have to take responsibility. Has never thrown anybody under the bus from no. Martin O'Neill, Mick McCarthy at international level, you know, Roberto Martinez, Koeman, Allardyce, Marco Silva. Yeah. And there's always that sense of this needs to be a line in the sand. We need to kick on. And that's the conversation for Everton last year on the final day of the season. This can't happen again. I'm just looking at the signing of Ashley Young, which on its own, you know, could be a smart and shrewd signing, vastly experienced player on could play on the other side and Coleman on the right and, you know, mm. have that layer. The worry for Everton fans, I'm sure, is that it's going to be that sort of summer again, that summer where they brought in Damari Gray and Andros Townsend and there's just no money and you're scooting around the bottom trying to get a deal here and there and that actually they might find themselves in the same position again next season. <laughs> It is going to be a difficult. It is going to be a difficult twelve months. There's, there's no, um, there's no getting away from that. Um, I don't think the, the the signing of Ashley Young is is is, is a bad thing. I'll, I'll say that now. Um, for the simple reason is, if he comes in and he has uh, an effect in terms of not even the amount of games that he plays, but in terms of um, just setting an example in terms of how he conducts himself in terms of. Um, how he looks after himself, the fact that he's still playing at 38, people should be looking at that and thinking, mm, what, what, what's the secrets there? You know, if he can have some sort of a positive effect, then then so much the better. It's only a 12-month contract, but as long as, as long as nobody at the club thinks that uh, Abdullah Decore's goal was was a magic wand and the problems were going away, uh, have gone away and everything's going to be fine, as long as the people who are making the decisions are well aware that um, there's still plenty of issues to solve for them. Um, then, then they, they, they've got a chance of, of sort of beginning to to move forward again. Um, but, but I, I tell you, the um, the last two years have just been intolerable, and supporters can't be subjected to the kind of um, well, the, the words trauma. Basically, th- th- those last four weeks last season were, were as bad as I've ever known and the, the sympathy they had for Evertonians and the angst that everybody was feeling was just just awful and the, the, yes they won on the final day of the, of the season but you know anybody who was in Goodison Park that day will tell you there was absolutely no appetite for celebration uh, 
And is the expectation they'll be in the new stadium at the start of next season? No, no, no. I um, it, they, they've said consistently that it's going to be at some point in in. 24 25 so it might be halfway through okay. and they might even take the decision that it's more prudent to wait for August 2025 26 season to um to go in uh, you've been very good with your time just a couple of final points uh, and I'm throwing to some that you may not know Tom Cannon is obviously a, a player that's an interest in Ireland though it does look as though our interest in Tom Cannon uh, may have been short lived a lot of speculation that he's going to go with the England uh, set up he was on loan at Preston the speculation he might leave yeah there is yeah, there's, there's, been, there's been some speculation about him but he's um, he's been away with the um, correct me if I'm wrong but he's um, he's gone away with the uh, the, the squad uh, they've got a friendly tomorrow night in um, just on, in outside Geneva um, he's a player that um, did well when he was at Preston last last uh, last year on loan um, he, he's the type of he's the type of player that Everton needs to sort of be hanging on to and developing they can't sort of let let kids with, with, with potential go elsewhere and finally uh, Deli Ali has given a yeah. remarkable interview today um, to Gary Neville on the overlap where he's you know spoken um, for the first time publicly about the abuse he suffered as a child a friend of his mother's and the real struggles he's had with sleeping pills um, a therapy for recent years and we've all looked at Deli Ali and wondered what the hell is going on for the last four or five seasons and how he hasn't fulfilled his potential and I think it's fair to say we all have the answer and uh, if anything the, the wonder is that he had the success that he had for so long considering he had all this going on in his life he is an Everton player still um, I suppose we all hope that this lifts something off his shoulders and he can get back to being a footballer and get back to being the best possible footballer he can be Oh, um, it, 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 it's one of those. Um, I think anybody who's, who's who's watched the interview, I think anybody who's seen a couple of, of, of clips of him, um, the the emotion that's that, that's running through him, um, he's got everybody's support. He's got everybody's well wishes. I think you've just made a brilliant point. And there is, you know, let's not think about what what he, he hasn't done recently let's think about what he has achieved in the circumstances that he's come from I mean the quotes that he said about when he was li- living on the estate with um, being held over by a bridge and um, you know being involved in drugs when he was eight years old and God bless us and save us that the uh, the trauma of being um, being molested and oh, it's just it, it no child, no child should should go through that uh, anywhere. I and mean, God, what a tragedy it, it's it's been for him. Um, he's at he's at a club where they will absolutely rally around him. The supporters will give him every bit of of, of um, compassion and support that that, that he needs. Um, I don't, I don't I don't think um, people should be sort of putting any kind of pressure on him in terms of well, when's he going to be back playing and whatever. Just let him get let him get. Well, again, um, I think I, th- I think what he's he's proven uh, again is he's, he's, he's shining a light on this. Uh, this we, we we get so invested emotionally in football, don't we? But then something like this happens, you realise what someone's gone through, and you realise it's it's just a, it's a triviality, really. And um, Delhi Ali has as everybody's best wishes, and just hope that um, he comes through the other side and. Um, I, 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 you know what? I hope this. I, I hope this is. It, it's clearly been a difficult interview for him to do. Um, mm. I can't even. You know, that's not even. I'm not even phrasing that correctly. It's it, 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 it's been a traumatic thing for him to do. Um, but I hope this is the first step that it. You know, it's out there in the, in, in in the open. There's nothing for him to hide. People know. People will be sympathetic towards him and help him. And you know, let let's see him move on from here. Uh, Dominic, it's been brilliant to talk to you as always. Thanks for taking the time. Pleasure, Nathan. No problem at all. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to be talking Wimbledon with Luke Jensen.